Okay, so today we're going to draw fun, silly monsters. I'm going to start off with a pencil. I want my monster to have sort of a silly feel to it. So I always remember sort of curvy and ir irregular things, wavy lines, are going to make it seem sort of gentler, more friendly, and it also works for more of a goofy sort of a feel. If you want it to be more scary, you might have more jagged zigzag, zigzag lines and stuff like that. I'm gonna have my monster screaming, like my monster is scared instead of the one doing the scaring. Then I might think like, what would my monster be scared of? Well, if this is the monster that comes out from under my bed. That monster is gonna be dealing with some stinky socks. Since pencil doesn't really show up too well on camera, I'm going to outline all of this in Sharpie, just so it's easier for you to see what I drew. I started with the big shapes. I started with that organic shape for its body, gave it some arms. I always think about what are some features that would be recognizable as a living thing. Pretty much all creatures are going to have a face, so if you just draw any random shape but give it eyes and a mouth, people will recognize it as sort of an animal type of thing. So I might draw a heart shape with eyes and a mouth and it's going to look like a living creature. It's called anthropomorphizing something when we give human characteristics to non-human things. So I have made here an anthropomorphic monster. After drawing our figure, what we're going to do is color using oil pastels. And when I'm using oil pastels, one of the first things I want to point out is the most common mistake students make is they press too gently and it looks almost like crayon. What we want to do is build up our colors and we want to get that nice oily surface built up, richer, deeper sorts of colors. One of the great things about oil pastels is you can layer and blend colors. So my pink can go over my blue to make a nice purple. And I try to create contrast. I try to make different parts stand out by having different colors, different color schemes. Sometimes I might use warm colors in one area, cool colors in another. But whatever I'm doing, I want to color nice and solidly to get that rich, bold color that oil pastels are great for. I often try to repeat certain things in different areas. So I'm repeating the same blue on the arms and legs as well as on its belly. That helps to create some unity, even though I've got different colors on different parts. I'm repeating the same colors around the composition to make sure it's all sort of tied together somehow. Those little highlights and shadows add a little bit of texture and dimension to the drawing. Now that I've colored my monster with the oil pastels, I'm going to set those aside. I am going to paint the background. I'm using different materials to create contrast um, and to get some experience using those different materials. So with paint, the thing to understand is there are two parts to paint. There's the pigment and there's the binder. The pigment is the colored stuff that's in your paint tray. The binder is the water or the other medium that allows it to flow. So I mix a little bit of water with my pigment to create a paint that I can spread across here. It's important to pay attention to how much pigment and how much binder you have. The more water or binder you have, the less pigment you have in your paint, which means the, your colors are gonna be a little bit more pale and faded. If you have less water on your brush, you're gonna have more pigment in the paint, which means you're going to get bolder colors. It's more saturated with color. I always want to try to paint with the tip of my brush. That gives me better control over where this paint is going to go. 
One of the nice things about oil pastels is oil and water don't mix, so as I'm painting with watercolors, if I accidentally go over the areas where I drew with the oil pastels, the paint the, uh, the paint slides right off the oil, so it, the drawing will show through the paint.